Good morning. Can you all hear me? Okay. How's everybody feeling? Good? Good. And last day, this is going to be easy and fun. Or I hope it's going to be easy and fun because it's going to be totally up to you. So uh, just a quick question to uh, start out this uh, exercise around reciprocity. Um, has anybody had somebody come up to them, total stranger, and ask you to use your cell phone? Yes. What, have you, what do you do? Do you let them? I did not. What's that? I did not. You did not? I did you did not. not. Uh, anybody else? Did you, did, you, did you let? You did. How many people have had this experience and, and have not given the cell phone? How many have given the cell phone? If, okay, just hold that thought in your mind as we uh, go through today's exercise. Um, very simply, uh, the, the way this is going to work uh, this morning is uh, there, we're, we're going to do it in two sessions. I'm going to explain briefly uh, what a reciprocity ring is. We're actually going to do the exercise and then we're going to go to our uh, half hour break and when we come back, we're actually gonna report out. The, the goal here is that everybody leaves today with something uh, and that something will be the resolution to some either problem you face, uh, interest you have or, or challenge that, you've, that you face. Uh, the notion of a reciprocity ring uh, comes from uh, Wayne Baker, who's a professor at the University of Michigan. And his mantra is that reciprocity is the engine of social capital. And inherently, what that means is that we, uh, as, as people, like to help other people. Now, there's more behind the story, and, uh, but I'm not going to share that now because I think that the best thing we could do is actually get into the actual activity because the learnings that come from the activity uh, come from doing it. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, I'm going to take a count of how many people are in the room and we're going to divide into groups of no more than 10. So we'll, we'll figure out based on the number of people how many groups there will be. And the goal is that collectively, the group will work to solve one issue for each person. So what will happen is that when you get into your groups, each member of the group will submit to the group an issue that you'd like help with. Now there are no boundaries to this issue today, right? It could be something that you are dealing with professionally that you want to tap the knowledge and expertise of the group. It could be an, a, an issue at home Maybe you have uh, uh, a challenge with your college student or your, your, uh, uh, one other of your kids and you, you want some guidance from the people at the table. Or maybe you're traveling somewhere and you just want some insights. It doesn't matter what the issue is, but everyone at the table submits one. And as long as it's meaningful to you and that you are going to uh, benefit from, from the, the solutions, that's what it's all about. So as you go through um, each issue at the table, and you're gonna have about 60 minutes, maybe a little bit more, depending on how, you, how, you work, how the group is working, I'm asking you to do a couple of things. One is, is uh, monitor the time, because depending on the number of people there, you have to, everybody has to come away with a solution. And the other thing is to just take some notes. It's not like we're not looking to write a paper or, uh, uh, capture mounds and mounds of information, but document the process. What are the things that happen? How do you arrive at the solution? And of course, make sure you collect what the solutions are and who are the people that contributed it, because you'll find that as you're going through the discussions with, the, with each other, your role as an individual might change during the course of, of uh, the discussion of each topic. And that will be highly dependent on your background. It will be uh, dependent on your experiences, on your professional network. And uh, um, 
what we'll want to hear is uh, at a report out afterwards is you know give us uh, maybe one or uh, give us uh, maybe two examples uh, that came out of your group. So that is as simple as it gets. Now um, before we get started and, and count out the groups, I want you to know that. Uh, this is only the second time that I've done this with a group. The first time, though, uh, was with uh, 400 of our chapter leaders. And I did have the help of uh, colleagues who, who were facilitating it, who uh, were deeper and, and more steeped in this. But what was incredible about the experience is that even in a room of 400, when we basically we ended up with 40 tables of 10, um, the outcomes were pretty, pretty incredible. And uh, I think that will tie back to some of the themes that will come back after we go through uh, the exercise. So with that said, I'm going to do a quick count. 3, 5, 6, 9, 11, 13, 16, 18, 21, 24, 27, 28, 32. I'm glad I can still do math. 34, 38. 44. 44. Okay. Let's see. So that would be, uh, we could do five groups of nine, um, but one group will have eight. Okay? So I can do this two ways. I can let you have the chaos of the room and let you self-organize. What a concept. <laughs> or we could count off by, by fours. I'd like to self-organize. And uh, same thing in terms of you, you all, when you self-organize, find, uh, find a, uh, a set of tables uh, that work for you uh, and uh, leave you to your own resources to get uh, whether you want to capture your output on, uh, on an iPad or uh, um, on paper, that'll be up to you. And the time now is 8.41. And uh, what I would suggest is that we will convene back at 9.45. So it'll be 64 minutes to carry out the exercise, and I'll be floating, okay? So that means four minutes to organize, and then you'll have the full 60. Go! So I think I'm going to be in 20 minutes, so I'm going to duck out now rather than disrupt the group okay. as it's going. But I just wanted you to know that I wasn't walking. We had uh, one departure, so uh, we're now uh, a couple of groups of eight. So. Want to get in? You're free right. to join. I, I think I'm best here. So okay. Got you yeah, I didn't want you to feel excluded. You know, I mean, it, the, I appreciate the inclusion. Yeah, the yeah. the great thing is it's diverse. It's all about the diversity of inclusion. So. That's true. What's that? I can't. I, I'm deaf. I think I'd be the youngest in the group. Yeah. But what's really cool is uh, when we did this um, with the 400 people.
30 minutes. 30 minutes.
I'd, uh, I'd like to check in. If I could just check in. Uh, so theoretically, we're down to 15 minutes. Is everybody comfortable with the 945, or do we need an extra five? This is your only chance for an extension. I have requests for five. 950. 950 is the finish time, okay? 20 minutes.
Okay, it's the witching hour. How are we doing? I knew it'd be hard to herd everybody back in. Okay, are we ready? Yes, we are. I, so the question is, there's no, no, nobody standing in judgment or anything. Did you, did this table fulfill all the requests? Yes. 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 Did you fulfill? No. You, one, well, I'll tell you what, you can use part of the break coming up and you can fulfill that. So uh, um, I'm curious again, uh, show of hands. Uh, I know I already heard from just eavesdropping, there were a lot of professional things. Uh, were there any personal things that came up? Do we need, do we need any further outside assist, professional assistance for the uh, personal assistance? Uh, were there any um, like uh, trip requests or travel, sports memorabilia? Uh, anything out of the ordinary that would be hobby related? No, okay. You're gonna all have a chance to, to uh, share that uh, when we come back after the break because what we'll do is uh, we'll give uh, each table maybe uh, five to seven minutes to share your experiences. Um, but before we do that, before we go to the break, which is uh, now set up outside, because uh, again, the, the rich conversation we'll do after the break. But um, does anybody here know who Adam Grant is? Adam Grant, a professor at Wharton, is the author of Give and Take, who's expanded on, on the research um, around these types of uh, collaboration activities, such as the reciprocity ring. And uh, there are in, in Adam Grant's book, he says there's really three types of people. Takers, matchers, and givers, okay? So I just spend a minute, uh, I don't know how well you can read this chart, but uh, this are, these are the behavioral characteristics of those three types of individuals. And these are all without criticisms, and no one is sitting here asking you to decide which one are you. However, I know already that this community is much more heavily weighted to the, uh, the giver side. Um, but the notion of, of a taker tends to be one that's acting in their own interests. And that actually in a group dynamic like this, one of the, at, one of the concerns that comes up in a, group, uh, in a group setting is that because a taker is so self-centered that they will do a lot of taking, but that they won't contribute, that they'll be looking for their own self gain. Ironically, in this research shows though, that that's not actually what happens in these kinds of environments. It turns out that takers actually show more attributes of givers when put into this kind of setting where the collaboration takes place. The notion of a matcher is uh, one for one. You know, I wanna take from Mark and I want to give to Seth. And I'm all about balance. I all want to be steady even. I don't want to be perceived as leaning one way or another. And again, it's not uh, a criticism of that type of behavior, uh, but it, it turns out that when that individual is put in, when that type of individual participates in a group, again, they take on more giver tendencies. And I don't think that the giver tendencies that are, are the giver behaviors that are listed up here are any surprise to anyone in this room. That givers are always acting in the best interest of others, even if it's at personal cost. They always look at the greater good. They give credit. They uh, are open to criticism even in some instances when they're open to criticism, they might hate you for about 30 seconds because you're being direct, 
but they process that, they get over that, and they're really open to hearing that. Um, they're more receptive to failure. They're more, they're more uh, resilient about failure. They learn from failure. And that in group settings, um, uh, givers uh, are actually, they wanna help, they wanna mentor others, they're interested in sharing their network, uh, their experiences with others, they're good storytellers. So uh, that, the, the, the reason that uh, I bring this up for you is that this exercise that you just went through, now we did it in a community here that we already know, but these types of activities are being deployed in companies to actually gain uh, solutions to key issues that are happening when you need to bring disparate parts of the organizations together. So uh, an engineering firm, CH2M Hill, uh, uses this as part of their modus operandi. And it turns out that when they come together to, uh, in, in Adam Grant's book, they actually cite uh, the executives of, CH, uh, of CH2M Hill saying that they probably save in, uh, in monetary numbers by bringing people together for these solutions, $250,000 a shot. But that wasn't the big kicker for me. It was the number of people days in trying to resolve problems that were saved, which they estimated was somewhere in the neighborhood uh, 50 days. Pharma company cited that they actually were able to resolve problems 67 days faster by bringing the right collaborators together and, and working on these solutions. So those are, those are business examples um, that does not uh, um, overshadow the fact that as a, as a uh, notion of helping others in terms of personal uh, gains, um, that these types of groups have resorted in somebody saying, I have a dream job to work for, for Google. And that networks, personal networks are shared that actually lead to that. Or I wanna go on a safari, and uh, actually this actually happened uh, at our group when we were doing the group of 400. We had 400 chapter leaders from 80, 85 countries. And somebody at the table, not even knowing that this individual, that this other person was at their table said, I'm interested in going on a safari. And the person at the table, one of our chapters from Namibia, I can make a connection for you. And so the, the request you know, was fulfilled. So that's kind of the background to this. This is oversimplified, obviously. Uh, Adam Grant's book is very interesting to, to take in if you have the opportunity. Uh, so what I'd like to do now is have us go uh, to the break. Uh, and we can come back, uh, well, actually, let's talk about the will of the body, right? We can end early today, if you'd like. Uh, so uh, I think um, if we come back at, right at 10.30, if we actually start at 10.30, we probably could be done no later than 11.15. Uh, and uh, so uh, let's go to the break, and uh, maybe at 10.25, we'll start herding people uh, back in. Come do the report outs. Uh, share some observations, and then uh, conclude. Tom.